Psychology A-Level Revision, Schizophrenia. Part 2, Issues Surrounding Classification, by Revised Time Visit YouTube. This video is going to discuss the problems we have with diagnosis and classification surrounding schizophrenia. It involves the introduction of DSM and ICD, stigmatism and labelling surrounding schizophrenia, and the reliability of diagnoses. Prior to the 1970s, there was a significant difference in the prevalence rates between different countries. In America particularly, the diagnosis was used liberally in comparison to other countries because their classification systems used broader definitions. In the US, 20% of patients were diagnosed with schizophrenia in the 30s, but this rose to 80% in the 1950s. At the Maudley Hospital in London, the diagnosis rate of 20% remained constant throughout the same period. In order to eliminate these diagnostic differences, the ICD and the DSM were introduced. These are two very similar major classification systems. However, there are several other diagnostic tools in addition to the DCM and the ICD that have been developed specifically to help clinicians diagnose schizophrenia. For example, the St. Louis criteria, and all which are still used today. The use of such criteria can actually improve the reliability of diagnosis. Farmer et al. in 1988 found high reliability using the standard interviewing technique known as the PSE, or present state examination. However, the fact that different criteria have been used to diagnose schizophrenia makes it difficult to do research studies. In studies of treatment outcomes, for example, it is difficult to compare data based on individuals who have been diagnosed with schizophrenia using different criteria. The fact that it's so difficult for clinicians to agree precisely what they all mean by the diagnosis of schizophrenia emphasises the point that all definitions are fairly arbitrary and liable to be modified or superseded. Some have even questioned the whole concept of mental illness and have suggested that the process of diagnosis is just a form of politically sanctioned social control. Other critics have suggested that it is stigmatising to attach a label of schizophrenia to an individual. Chef believed that people labelled with the diagnosis will conform to the label and it therefore becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. More recently, Boyle and Bentall, while accepting the general idea of mental illness, have suggested that the concept of schizophrenia is neither reliable nor valid and so the diagnosis is not clinically or scientifically useful. In clinical practice, it is often difficult to define boundaries between schizophrenia and other disorders for example, mood disorders, personality disorders and developmental disorders such as autism, although it is sometimes possible to use additional tests to make the distinction. For example, drug-induced psychosis can be differentiated by carrying out extended observations and toxicology tests. However, particularly in the case of mood disorders, it is more difficult, especially as depression is frequently comorbid with schizophrenia. The ICD and DSM have tried to address the problem of symptom overlap by proposing mixed disorder categories, such as schizoaffective disorder or post-psychotic depression. However, the validity of such categories has been questioned. Subtypes of schizophrenia Paranoid schizophrenia This is characterised by delusions, particularly of persecution and hallucinations. However, symptoms such as disorganised speech and flat effect are usually absent. Catatonic schizophrenia. This is characterised by unusual motor activity, either marked agitation or complete immobility, and is often accompanied by extreme negativism and peculiar posturing, although this disorder is very rare. Hemiphrenic, as categorised by the ICD, or disorganised, as categorised by the DCM, schizophrenia. This often begins in an early age, characterised by incoherent and disorganised speech, flat or inappropriate affect and bizarre behaviour. There is also hallucinations and delusions, but these are not structured as in paranoid schizophrenia. Residual schizophrenia. This is where at least one episode of schizophrenia has been experienced in the past, but they are no longer exhibiting prominent signs of the disorder. This is diagnosed when an individual is clearly showing schizophrenic symptoms, but they do not fit neatly into one of the other subcategories. Sometimes it is later seen as an early sign of one of the other subtypes. However, the validity of these subtypes has been questioned. 
In practice, most British psychiatrists prefer to use the overarching diagnosis of schizophrenia and they only use the subcategories in a minority of cases where there is very close correspondence to the criteria. A valid classification system should be able to predict the outcome and response to treatment. However, it has been proved very difficult to predict either of these with accuracy, as there are wide individual variations. There is now evidence that an early diagnosis and prompt assignment to treatment is associated with a better long-term outcome for people with schizophrenia. This demonstrates how important it is to get the diagnosis right. This concludes part two of the Schizophrenia series. Thank you for watching and remember to subscribe to Goddess Willius for more Revised Time Vid videos. This video was part two and part one is already available. Part three will be out soon and will be on the biological explanations of schizophrenia.